all right, so we're going to do two things to help you understand exactly what this is, okay? First is we're going to take a trip down memory lane. We're going to go past, and you get the advantage of knowing what you know today, but we're going to go three years into the past. And you're sitting in this room, and I'm standing in front of you, and I say, guys, I have this really interesting game idea. We're going to take a little birdie, we're going to stick it in a rubber band, and then we're going to pull it back, and we're going to send that sucker flying, and we're going to hit bricks and piggies, and everyone's going to love it. <laughs> and I'm going to give you an opportunity to share it, and everybody that downloads that game because you told them about it, I'm going to let you share in the revenue. Now, three years ago, if somebody would have told you about that, what would you have thought? Crazy. <laughs> and then three years ago, when you found out that Angry Birds generated $3 billion of revenue annually, who would have been the crazy one? Okay? Now, it's crazy because Angry Birds... A game where a tiny little birdie is pulled back in a rubber band and hits some bricks and piggies is a three billion dollar company <clears throat> annually. And you can't even figure out, you would not have even given that a time of day, would you? Okay? Now let me explain a different game to you. Game one is on right now, the Cavs versus Golden State. And I just invited you all here, and we're not here having this meeting, we're here watching the game. The game's on right now. And I invited you all to play, and I said, hey, we're going to play along with the game tonight. We're not just going to watch. We're going to play along with the game tonight. So use this link, download this app onto your phone, and let's play along. So you all download the app. And it asks you at the start of the game, say, you're going to make some picks. What do you think is going to happen? And we put in whether we think we're a casual player or an intermediate or an advanced. And some of us feel like we're casual, some intermediate, some advanced. That's fine. The experience changes for you. But I'm advanced. We're going to play advanced right now really quickly. So I put advanced, and it says, okay, so let's ask you some questions before the game starts. Like, who's going to be ahead at the end of the first quarter, second quarter, third quarter? Who's going to win the game? What team's going to score more three-pointers than the other team? What team's going to have more foul shots than the other team? Who's going to foul out? Foul out? Who's going to be the high score of the game? Who's going to be the high score per team? You're just making some picks. Now, the more you know the teams, the better you're going to be able to answer these questions, obviously. And there's some great little information if you're thinking, well, I have no idea how to answer that. There's these little helpful tips and tools that show you what the performance has been in the last seven to ten games. So you can kind of get a feel for it and put your picks in there. We all make our little picks and predictions of what's going to happen. Now the game's about to start. And one minute before tip-off, your phone goes bling, and you look down. It says there's one minute to tip off. You have 15 seconds to tell me who's going to win the tip off and hold possession of the game first. So here we go. You have you, you got 10 seconds. Go. Is it going to be the Cavs or Golden State? Go. Warriors. <laughs> Warriors. 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 Golden State. Warriors. 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 <laughs> Cavs. Warriors. Warriors. See how it works. So everybody makes their pick, right? And you got 10 seconds to make your pick. Well, the tip off goes. Guess who won the tip off? Cavs. So who's got points? You got points. And guess what happened? All these people guessed Golden State. We're all in the same thing. And we can see, guess what happened to him? Bleep, 20 points. He just hit the leaderboard. And he may or may not choose to harass us all about that because we all picked Golden State. All right? He would harass us, wouldn't he? I can tell. I'm just yeah, looking at him. He would definitely be doing some harassment. Now the game's going along. And Steph Curry steps up, goes for the three, gets fouled on the shot. Timeout is called. Bleep, look down. Steph Curry's going to the line. He's taking three foul shots. Will he make three, two, one, or zero? Go. Three. Two. Three. Two. Okay. You see how this works? Everybody puts their picks in. Three, two, one, or zero. Now Steph Curry's at the line. And guess what's happening? You are watching first quarter free throws like it's the fourth quarter and the game's on the line because you want to be right. Because we have this competitive spirit in front of us. We love sports because it brings out this competitive nature in us that we just love to play. But we don't get to play along. Our favorite people are playing along, but now we're playing with them. I am nearly standing off the couch begging those to go in if I guessed three, correct? Okay, so now we got the people who got that right. Boom, points are scored. Leaderboard is rotated. You just got notified that I am now leading the game, and I absolutely will throw down on that for sure. You can count on it. And now we're playing along, and next thing happens, ball goes out of bounds. Cavs ball, they call timeout. And bleep, you look down and says, okay, it's Cavs possession. Will they score on this possession, yes or no? Yes. Okay, if so, who's scoring the next basket on the five that are on the court? LeBron. LeBron, okay, so he's picking LeBron. So now we go, ball comes in. They do score on the possession, but it's not LeBron. He got some of his points. But she guessed yes and got the correct player. She got more points. Boom, she's up on you on the leaderboard. That's dangerous. You never want, you never want her getting ahead of you on the leaderboard because I know her and she will throw down on you. <laughs> All right, so now do you see how the game is played? 
And you're going along and the next gal comes and says, you can make this call, but it costs one token, which is called virtual game currency, one token. Now I have a token, so I play, but you don't have a token and you don't play. And I get it right and I jump ahead of you on the leaderboard and you realize I'm going to need some tokens because it's more fun to play with tokens because I get to play more and there's more options available to me. So at the end of the quarter, your phone goes off and says, hey, you missed some live play calls because you didn't have any tokens. Would you like to purchase some tokens now or would you like to click on a couple of these ads where our advertisers are offering you tokens for tonight's game? He clicks on a couple ads. He's now got three or four tokens loaded in his account. He's ready for the second half or the second quarter or whatever it is and we have all just experienced a game. Now, how many of you would actually find that game entertaining? Absolutely. Does that sound more entertaining than shooting a little birdie from a rubber band to hit the bricks and piggies? Yes. Okay? You understand what I'm saying here? If a game like that can go and become a $3 billion annual game, what can a game where you actually want to play, what kind of game can that turn into? Because what happens is instead of you sitting there watching, having the game on TV and your teenage kids down here playing a game and, and texting with their friends, you know what's happening instead? The game they're playing is the game you're watching. And the text they're doing is to the group that they're playing with. And you are socializing and creating gameplay and driving back to an actual live experience. And you know what's going to happen? You're going to find that parents who have nothing in common with their kids are all of a sudden going to have something to do together. And you're going to find that people who haven't stayed in touch with family members that live three states away are going to be playing together every Saturday afternoon when their favorite college teams hit the court. And you're going to find that people are going to group together and play a game. And they're going to have fun. And it's going to be competitive. And they're going to enjoy themselves because of a game. Now, the reality is the app market is enormously large. And it's going to continue to be large. And the reason why the app market is large really is games. Games are the number one revenue generating source in the app world, bar none. Matter of fact, the top revenue generating uh, apps are even apps like Candy Crush and Clash of Clans and games like this. But the reason why they've become the top revenue generating apps is because the way they drive revenue. Now I want you to think about this and answer honestly. Five years ago when the first app started coming out, would you have dreamed of paying to put an app on your phone. Heavens no. No one paid. Now, a lot more people are willing to pay a buck ninety-nine for an app if it's a whole lot better app, right? It's not that far-fetched. Would you have ever just made purchases inside of those apps five years ago? No. But now, a 99-cent purchase inside the app happens all day, every day. So what's happening is free apps are still king of the show. But those free apps are generating the vast majority of revenue because they have figured out how to monetize free apps. And the way they monetize it is through advertising. The advertisers don't really have a voice anymore on television because the only thing people still watch live is sports. With everything else, they record and they fast forward. Okay? So advertising inside of apps where they know they have focused attention is a very solid thing for an advertising base. So they're willing to promote and build inside of your own game experience because that's where the eyeballs are. So these games have figured out how to monetize a free app and the way they do it is through virtual game currency. So in a game like Candy Crush, their virtual game currency is diamonds. I need to have some extra diamonds to do this so I can pay 99 cents or I can click on this ad to get a diamond and I play the game. It's revenue to the company either way, correct? Whether the consumer pays or the advertiser pays it. So we have virtual game currency called tokens. So whether they pay the dollar for the token or they click on the ad for the token, irrelevant to us, it's revenue the same way. So that's how the game is played. That's how the game is monetized. And the reason you're all sitting here is because we had to choose how are we going to put this game out there. Well, the significance of the app world is both a problem and an opportunity. There's 100 billion apps downloaded by the end of 2015. So, and there's supposed to be 268 billion downloaded by the end of 2017. That growth is a huge opportunity, but it's also a problem. If there's 268 billion apps being downloaded, how in the world do you make sure your app is one of them? Well, some of the companies are spending a lot in advertising, like Candy Crush, who spends $5 million a month to advertise their app. But we decided to go a different route. We decided instead that sports are naturally social. No one ever watches a sporting game alone. I mean, even if you're in your house, sitting on your couch by yourself, 
you are texting or calling or seeing posts come across of people watching the game. And if you end up watching it by yourself, what happens when you go to work the next day? There's 30 minutes of conversation about what happened the game before. You're never alone in a game setting, ever. So if that's the case and people have a natural tendency to be social during sports, why not let people take the game to people? Why not put the power in the hands of the people? It's a better marketing strategy anyway because these games like Candy Crush have hit a glass ceiling. They get 500 million to 600 million downloads and they just can't break through because advertising only has a reach that goes so far. But put something out there like Facebook, they have over a billion hits, billion downloads. How are they double and almost triple the size of a game? Because it's about people. It's about people sharing with people and there's no end to that reach. I want to give you an example of how this works. This is the power of people. How many people do you think the average person has following them between Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for their personal accounts? Average, what do you think? Throw out some numbers for me. 130. Okay, 130? 500. 500? 1,000. Okay, the average is a little over 350, but we're gonna go with 100 because it's super easy math. Okay, so let's say the average person has 100 people following them between Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, okay? They've got 100 people following them. Now, what happens is they make a post out there and they say, hey guys, game one on tonight. Come, we're going to play together. It's going to be a great time. We're going to play along with this app. Just click here to download a free app and then we're all going to be in the same social setting and we're going to be able to play along with this app. Okay? What's your percentage likelihood that you could get, say, five of those 100 people to play along with you? Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good odds, considering the fact that you've got a 90% chance that they like sports in some capacity. Okay? So, five. I'm only asking five out of 100 to come and actually play with you. Okay? Now, those five people all, interestingly enough, have a reach of 100 people from their Facebook to, or their social accounts. So, your reach just grew to 500 and they have 100. And your reach just grew to 50,000 and they have 100. So your reach actually just grew to 5 million. Now if only 5% of that ever comes on board, you have 250,000 players playing, at, playing this game. And if they ever only clicked on one ad per month, that's $250,000 in revenue. And you're making over $25,000 a month. Hmm. That's how this works. It's because people have a reach and a power of, of people that, that doesn't exist in advertising and it's because it's a social invitation to come play it's a great way to create social interaction so we've got a game it's all about live interaction with sports it's all about bring friends family and fun and it's about bringing people back together it's about using the power of people and leveraging the power of social to actually get an app out there that's going to do great things and if you're one of those people that shares it then you'd be financially rewarded and it doesn't get more complicated than that just who's making the game okay so games only as good as its game maker so this is this is something that's fascinating but as Jeff came up with this idea reached out to a friend he says I've got the guy to make your game he said oh yeah who is it he said my brother he said who's your brother and he said my brother his name's Mark Mangi he's worked for EA Sports for seven years he was the guy responsible for Madden football he took at NASCAR to the number one game in the world and demolished his competition then he built, then he worked on Madden Football, took Madden Football to the number one game in the world, then took Madden Football from a console game to online to mobile. He said, I think he's your guy. He's built, he's built three number one sports games in the world in basketball, football, and NASCAR. And considering the fact that we'll do football, basketball, soccer, NASCAR, tennis, golf, etc., he's got all your right connections. So he comes online, he's excited. He said, you know what? I've been building games my entire career, sports games. And he said, and there is a huge chunk of the market that's missing in sports games, and it's called the game for the fan. So there is not a single sports game in the industry today that is the game for the fan. There is gamers games, and there's fantasy, which is hardcore, hardcore sports advocates. He said, but there is nothing out there for the fans. And he said, and the fans are the majority of the population. He said, I know how to build a game for the fans. And the great part about Mark is not only is he an unbelievable game maker, his connections are insane. The types of people he's bringing on his team to build this game with him are people with Disney Pixar type of experience, game making experience from additional EA Sports, Tiger Woods Golf, all of those types of things coming in on board. And those are the people making this game. So it's one thing to talk about a great game. It's another thing to make sure that you know that the people building this game 
have already been there, done that, and made world-class games. And so their, their objective is to turn this into a true fan experience where it's an actual game. It's not a spreadsheet. It's not, it's not a console. It's a game.